Hello, I'm Stuart McHardy and I'm here on Edinburgh's Carlton Hill to tell the story of two monuments. One, the one behind me, and another one just over the road called the Political Martyrs Monument. Now behind me, this mock classic edifice was started up by the government in 1822 with the intention of creating what they called the National Monument for Scotland. The local establishment, people like Sir Walter Scott, Lord Elgin and various others uh, of the aristocracy were very keen to see this go ahead and what they were hoping to do was build a complete model of the Parthenon in Athens and use it as a kind of mausoleum where people who were considered to be national heroes could be interred. The whole idea being it was a national monument in Scotland effectively to empire though one of the key points at the time was to supposedly honour the sacrifice made by all the Scottish soldiers who had died in the Napoleonic Wars and other empire escapades around the world. The problem was that it was going to cost £46,000. The government put up 16 and the rest was supposed to be raised by public subscription. The people of Scotland were a bit reluctant to do that which is why you can see that it's only a tiny part of the model of the Parthenon that was designed. And due to this, the establishment figures in Scotland began to refer to this as Scotland's or Edinburgh's disgrace. And in fact, what it is, is a very good illustration of what the people of Scotland thought about empire. Our second monument, the Political Martyrs Monument, is here in Carlton Cemetery at the foot of Carlton Hill. This one was raised in 1840 by public subscription. Successfully the idea had gone out to commemorate the memory of five men who were transported to, in Austra to Australia in the 1790s for the heinous crime of actually calling for democratic reform. They were not calling for revolution, they were not calling for independence, they were simply asking for reform of the corrupt parliamentary system at Westminster. This, however, was far too much for the establishment to bear, frightened as they were by the French Revolution. And Henry Dundas basically had sole charge of Scotland at the time, so much so he was known as Henry IX, had them tried for sedition. Handpicked judge, handpicked jury. Result, foregone conclusion. Transportation for life to Australia. And in actual fact, two of them managed to get out. One of them being Thomas Muir, who was the secretary of the Friends of the People at the time. And he traveled the globe. He escaped from Australia went over to America, went through Mexico, Cuba, and ended up in a Spanish jail. He was freed from the Spanish jail by the intervention of the revolutionary French, who made him a hero of the French Revolution because of his commitment to democracy and reform. And his speech at his trial became very, very, very famous in the 18th century. It was part of American civics classes for generations. And in it, he said something very telling, which is inscribed on the side of the monument. I have devoted myself to the cause of the people. It is a good cause. It shall ultimately prevail. And today, we know what he meant. <laughs>